Have you seen those videos of the dogs doing agility competitions? You know the ones where the super fast dogs weave through the poles and race through the tunnels while the owners are uh, running alongside them. That looks super cool, am I right? All right, have you ever wanted to do that with your dog? Well, let me tell you, that is actually a whole lifestyle. To really compete on the competitive circuit, you pretty much have to devote a big portion of your life to training and traveling and going out of town to events. Now it can be done, but it's a lot. But you can still have some fun with agility without going all in. And you can still teach your dog fun things, maybe even to go to an event or two. But how do you get started? Well, today I'm gonna to give you some great tips on getting your dog ready for agility. But first we're gonna talk about how to tell if your dog is a good fit or a good candidate for it. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some of the fun agility type games you can play with your dog today in your own backyard at home. Now, I hope your pup is napping while you're watching this because after this, it's playtime. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Okay, first, let's talk about those agility dogs you see in the competitions. But first, <laughs> I'm gonna give you a moment to hit that subscribe button so you get notified when another great video like this one is ready. Did you know that oftentimes true agility champions are bred for this behavior? That means that breeders take dogs who love agility and do well and breed them with other dogs who have similar traits. Now, there's no guarantee, but likely you'll end up with a dog who is a super dog at this stuff. All right, now, of course, you could end up picking a rescue dog and he's gonna do great at agility too. But to really increase the chances of success, most people start at that breeding stage. But remember this, your dog doesn't care about winning or competing. The dog is enjoying the practice. So unless you've got another goal in mind, consider just trying agility out for fun and seeing where it goes. Now, my second point is about their age. Dogs who are competing in agility are often two years old or older. They have to get past the puppy stage and be fully grown so that the repetitive practice sessions don't damage their joints. Now, if that's something you're not familiar with, you should probably check out this video where I go into it a little bit further. But there's plenty of training that can happen before the dog is fully grown. I'm gonna go into that in just a moment. Finally, you're gonna have to decide if you and your dog have the right temperament for the agility work. Now, I know it looks easy, but it involves a lot of very specific training of body parts doing things that don't actually come naturally to the dog. It's also usually done in a very distracting environment with other dogs, bright lights, new noises, and a whole ton more. It actually takes a pretty confident dog to look past all those distractions and work hard at the course. And you also have to think about how much time you have to put into it. That dog isn't gonna be practicing without you. So if you're not sure you have the time to raise a competing agility dog, you probably don't, but that's okay. Just because you love to swim doesn't mean you need to try out for the Olympics, am I right? We just need to have some fun. All right, let's move on to my top eight tips for preparing your dog for agility training. And don't go anywhere because after that comes the fun part, making your own agility or obstacle course for your dog. Okay, I'm gonna go a little fast here, but I know you guys are all quick thinkers. You'll get the ideas. Tip number one, master the basics. This means get really solid at the basic obedience skills like sit and stay, down, loose leash walking, and more. Now, if you need help with those, that's what my online course is for. It's gonna provide you with great games and training lessons to go through all of the basics. Many people use it for the training program for their AKC Good Citizen certification. All right, tip number two, develop a common language through training and understanding canine body language. Now this comes from working together, but it also comes from the human paying close attention to how your dog responds, what makes your dog tick, and other factors like when it's a good time to train and how to sense when your dog is done working for now. Tip number three, know what motivates your dog. All dogs are food motivated. If they weren't, they would die. But there are other forms of rewarding too, including praise and play. Figure out what motivates your dog to work. Number four, start easy to ensure success. Build up from there. A great place to start to work together is with a simple obstacle course like the one I'm gonna teach you next. Just make it fun and easy for your dog and set them up for success. Tip number five, take some time to understand dog exercise protocol, including warm-ups, stretching, cool-downs. 
Yes, dogs need that kind of muscle protection too, just like humans. There are some great articles on this online, or you can also discuss this with your vet. Tip number six, get your handling cues down solid. This goes beyond sit and stay, but goes into directional cues, like when you want your dog to go left, or when you want them to go right, or up, or down, or turn. Having a solid understanding of these is gonna help you when you're trying to teach your dog the very specific behaviors needed for agility. Tip number seven, increase body awareness. This means working on skills on different body parts, like teaching your dog to put his back feet up on a step, or teaching him to raise one paw, but not the other, as you cue it. If you're working on this, I suggest training with a clicker, which can better capture precise moments when you want your dog to do what they're doing. Just remember to associate the clicker first. It won't work if your dog doesn't know what it means. And finally, practice what we call dark skills. That tunnel that pups fly through is pretty dark, so you're gonna want your dog to be confident in all kinds of lighting. Now, those are some of the great tips to get you started on agility, and now let's have some fun with your dog. All right, did you see this recent video here on playing with your dog? I had a lot of people telling me it was exactly what they were looking for. And if you like that one, you're gonna love this next part. Pickles and I, and some of my other members on the Dream Dog team, did an obstacle course. It sounds so simple, but there are actually some things you're gonna wanna keep in mind when building your own. I'm gonna tell you about that today and show you the fun we had with our own dogs. And as you heard me talk about in this video, dogs need both mental and physical stimulation to really help them get the most out of their day. Dogs' brains need work too. Now this obstacle course is gonna be a great way to challenge them both mentally and physically. And no two obstacle courses are alike, nor do they need to be. You can build one that's perfect for your dog. Now there's a few things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind about this game before you begin. For one, consider the age and the physical limitations of your puppy. Now it's totally fine to play this game with young puppies, but you're gonna notice that their attention span is a lot less. You're gonna also wanna avoid any kind of repetitive motions, like a lot of jumping. It's not good for their joints to have the same action over and over and over again. So consider obstacle courses with different textures or where they have to step on or around these things with less jumping until they're a little bit older. Secondly, try to use some of the items the dog is familiar with and a few that are new. That can keep it interesting, but also not too hard. Remember, we're always gonna wanna set our dogs up for success. If it's too easy, you can make it a little harder as you go. Lastly, think about different physical actions you want your dog to do, and then try to incorporate them in a variety of ways. I'm talking about things like crawling through, jumping over, jumping on, stepping down, avoiding something, or walking around something. Have a good variety so your dog really has to use his brain. All right, let's talk about my newest team member, Caitlin. Here she is with Peach. Adorbs, both of them, am I right? Peach is three years old and has very good manners thanks to Caitlin's work in the dog industry and her dedication to teaching Peach how to live in a human world. Peach was pretty excited to work with Caitlin on this project. She's never done an obstacle course before and definitely hasn't done anything like this in Caitlin's apartment, but you can see she had no trouble with the task. Caitlin chose a few obstacles that were really already set up, including the Chase Lounge, landing on a specific spot, jumping over some Swiffers, and weaving through the dining room chairs. That's the great thing about working in your home. You just use the obstacles that you have. Now, Peach took quite well to these tasks. As you can see, she's been lured through the course with a treat. That's a great first step. Now, over time, Caitlin will increase the time between the treats until Peach can do the whole course in one sequence. That's not how we start though. We're gonna wanna make sure that it's easy and fun, so at first, we're just gonna start with luring. Be sure to save some tasty kibble out of your dog's regular food for this and other tasks where a lot of rewarding's gonna happen. That keeps your pup from being overfed. Next up, Allison and Lincoln. Allison chose a hula hoop, some stairs, a bench, and Lincoln's crate that has a side door, so Allison made it into a tunnel. Now Lincoln had already been introduced to all of these objects. This hula hoop was the newest object, but earlier in the week, Allison had taught him to go through it, so he was pretty familiar with it. Now the stairs are used for Lincoln to get up on Allison's bed, and another set, for Allison's daughter's bed. Lincoln is really a small guy, so he really needs these stairs. Allison just simply placed them back to back. Now, this is the bench by the door where he waits when guests arrive. 
And this is the crate which Allison had made into a tunnel a few days earlier so he could practice. So you see, none of these things are entirely new to Lincoln, but they were in different places, so they needed to be introduced again. And at first, Allison worked with Lincoln to just go through each obstacle, and then he got a treat. Then Allison started to pair the two obstacles together, and she would give him the treat at the end of the two obstacles. And towards the end of the session, Lincoln was going through all three obstacles before he even got the reward. Did you see how Allison slowly increased the difficulty? That's what I mean about setting your dog up for success. Make it easy. The dog does well, it's a win-win for both of you. Allison could continue to build up the course into an entire sequence and then reward at the very end. That's how agility dogs do it. All right, but Lincoln is also a family dog, so the goal of this game was really just to have fun. Lincoln was getting quite a few treats from this session, so Allison took a break and returned to this a little bit later. Now, when it's not such a new concept, Allison's gonna drop the treat value to something less rich. We'll have to see if Lincoln's gonna work for it or not. Allison also can lengthen the time between the treats. After about 10 minutes of working together, this is actually where Lincoln ended up. Now you can see that working hard with their brains and their bodies is a great way to help your dog rest well when it's nap time. Before I show you what Pickles and I did together, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I've got more great videos for you guys coming up. All right, here I am working with Pickles. Now I wanted a little room to work and I was it was a pretty nice day out, so Pickles and I set up in the driveway. That might work well for you, but note the environment. If it's busy or windy or there's a lot of traffic, it might get in the way of your dog's enjoyment. Now, I actually have a lot of random props from my work with dogs, so I just pulled all of that out of the garage to set it up. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. I just put it all in a line. When I first introduced it to Pickles, I just let him smell everything. It would have been super hard for him to be asked to do something with all these new and different items. So I needed to allow him to check it all out first. Now, after he had a chance to check it out, I directed him all the way through it. Now, you should know that Pickles and I have actually worked together a lot, so we really have a common language together. He often knows what I want him to do with just one or more hand signals. Now, that might not be the case for your dog, and that's okay. Now, working with your dog in games like this allows you to build up that common language that you can use with other skills, like recall and leave it and other important ones out there in the real world. Now, after Pickles and I worked on this course for a while, he was just ready for a long snooze, just like Lincoln. I hope you learned some great stuff today, both about agility training and doing a fun obstacle course with your own dog. I'd love to see you working with your dog, so go ahead and post a picture or a video in my Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon. Now, in the comments below, tell me what household objects are you gonna use for your obstacle course?